Hey, it's Chris. Let's talk Epic Seven Arise. Now, if you followed my channel at all, I've talked about this in a couple other videos. But if you're new and you're looking at this, let's talk about whether or not you should be backing this. Is this for you? What are some pros? What are some cons? Let's break down the Kickstarter page. Let's look at the value. Let's dive in and get a true look at the depth that's there, both from the value and the campaign as a whole, as well as the game. Let's take a look. So here it is. Epic Seven Arise, the board game. This is based on the hit mobile game. And so it has a very large following outside of the tabletop community. And I've heard a couple people already comment on the fact that it kind of came out of nowhere. It's just that it wasn't as well hyped within the board game circles because it's coming from an outside IP. And because this is a first time company. I'll say right now, right away, because this is a first time company, because there are miniatures involved, because there is an IP involved, those are all flags, not red flags, but flags to tell you that this may be a slightly bumpier road post campaign, especially in production, than maybe something that doesn't have those ties. And is that worth it to you? Are you okay with a little bit of that? That's the first question you need to ask yourself before you even look any further. Because I know a lot of people comment online that they are not okay with those things. They do, they stay away from first-time publishers. They stay away from miniatures if they haven't done them before. And they stay away from IPs. If not, let's go on. It's already almost at a quarter of a million dollars. They said in the first 12 hours that they were not expecting anywhere near this reception. So let's take a look at why they have gotten this reception. Why Farside Games is doing so well with a brand new campaign, a brand new game on the crowdfunding scene. Now... Already, the art, again, is going to be relatively divisive. I see this comment all over the place for other games like Madara, for Arcadia Quest, for some of the level 99 games. I do not like the artwork. It's anime. It's chibi. It's I just don't like that style. That's fine. And if you don't like that style, if you don't like the style of artwork sometimes, you are going to miss out on games that you are judging a book by its cover. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're just going to be missing out because you're judging very superficially and not looking what's there deeper. Now, and this is the first point that I think is a little bit pro and a little bit con. It is a cooperative game, but it has a semi-cooperative play style to it potentially. Now, how I look at it as someone who is not a huge semi-cooperative game fan is that I would probably treat it like I treat Marvel Legendary. Where, oh, sure, at the very end, sure, whatever, that's great, sure. Not, ha ha, we won, ha ha, I won the most. That has no interest to me. Part of this semi-cooperative is that there is a reward for beating bosses, for beating enemies, and you're getting rewarded, and whoever has the most reward at the end is the winner. It's a cooperative game, you're doing it together. I think when you're doing cooperative, I don't think semi-cooperative is what you're looking for. They did put out in an announcement in one of the updates that they are looking at doing just a full cooperative, taking that element out. But I think you could easily take that out yourself right now and go fine just from that standpoint. There are two pledge levels currently. One is the core pledge. It is a $95 core pledge, which gets you the game, the exclusive unlock that they got since they got 2,000 backers in the first 48 hours, all of the stretch goals, as well as this mobile game coupon, and any of the daily unlocks. The pledge that I am pledging for right now is the $120 pledge, which includes an additional expansion. Why is that important? What is the difference? We'll talk about that in a second. The other interesting thing to note is this is only about 13 months out. Depending on how many assets they have already approved and how closely they're working, I could see it being feasible. I could also see this being, you know, August of 2022. Again, if that worries you, I'd back out right away and pick it up on the secondary market. So here we go. Breaks down the pledge a little bit further. The Four Hope expansion. So the gameplay. This is the one area that I have concerns about the most is that there is not a gameplay video out there. And they have done their due diligence on this Kickstarter campaign page on almost every other aspect, including having like a man versus meeple intro video and a 4K unboxing video. But there is no actual gameplay. Now they've said they're going to try and get one out, but I don't know if that's going to happen. There are unique mechanics with this, with the speed mechanics, how the monsters are attacking, the areas in which you stand on each zone that make it quite unique compared to other cooperative dungeon crawlers out there. It is light, 
but I do not think it is light in the sense that there is no strategic or tactical gameplay or element to it, even though the choices that you may make seem relatively simple in terms of what you're playing, how the turns go, and what is happening in terms of attacking the monsters versus them attacking you. I like the elements that you can combo with another player to do a dual attack. I like the fact that you do not have to worry, especially in the semi-cooperative element, if you are playing that way, about kill stealing, that if you contribute to killing a monster, you get a reward no matter what. This is the little exclusive expansion that I talked about. Again, I like the fact that they're including standees, but also having miniatures. I would have liked to see a pledge only with standees because they also have an add-on down lower for acrylic standees. What if you just had a pledge that was all acrylic standees and it was somewhat a little bit lower than these other two pledge levels? That would be ideal for someone like me. And I think that would hit a lot of people's sweet spots because it's less money to invest in a slightly, let's be honest, riskier product than some of the other mainstream ones or frequent contributors to the crowdfunding scene that are out there. The miniatures look amazing. For a first time, these look absolutely detailed. Some of the pictures on the Board Game Geek page are in much better detail. It looks great. You're getting eight heroes, so there's some variability. Again, here are the standees that I mentioned with the encounters because you're going to have encounters between the areas on the map, which determine what you fight, who you fight, that sort of stuff, and what you're trying to do. 20 map tiles, 68 enemy cards. The one thing that I am slightly worried about, though, is the amount of artifact cards and the amount of story cards. Is there going to be enough depth and variability there so that you don't feel very constrained and seeing the same things over and over again between campaigns or between storylines? The expansion. The expansion is marked as $40 if you buy it separately. Now, if you get the deluxe pledge, you are getting it for essentially $25. Do I think it's worth $40 based on the three miniatures of the heroes, the three enemies of the mini, and then, you know, what's in there? No, I don't think that's a $40 expansion, but for $25 additional dollars, I think it's probably worth it. Here you go. This is the other thing that they're doing that I like. They have daily unlocks and daily stretch goals. And again, to make it very clear, they were clearly not expecting this to fund as fast and as high as it did. And so they weren't even ready after the first day with the new set of stretch goals because they'd already blown through all of them. Now, it's an interesting combination, though, of gameplay and upgrades. Most of the unlocks are gameplay related, and you have a little bit of artwork here. You've got some alternative setup. I don't know what that actually means, but I want to know because is it going to actually be useful? Stretch goals, you've got, again, a little bit of a mix, but more towards the actual game itself in terms of quality. You've got tile thickness, you've got punch board thickness, you've got effect token upgrades, you've got dice upgrades, you've got another hero. So they've got a lot of other things that they're throwing in there and you can see that there's clearly going to be more planned. I also like the fact that they are not all of a sudden spacing these out a la Simon, where all of a sudden the stretch goal is from 10,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 apart. Because those are clearly then prefabricated fake stretch goals. I don't know how these are and how detailed and thought out these are or how strategic they are or how true they are, but I don't at least get the opposite sense of that. So it's nice ones for that. Here you go. Here's the expansion I talked about. They're offering a dice tower, the acrylic standees, and then they talk about the preview videos. Again, having looked at those, there's plenty of information in there that you can get a good sense, especially from the Man vs. Meeple video, about the general overview of the gameplay. Shipping is going to be what it's going to be on these games. I, I never am surprised. I never worry about shipping, um, thankfully, being in the U.S. But I know that is a big concern, especially with the VAT from my European friends. And I believe they've said that they're helping subsidize that already. I could be wrong, so don't quote me. This game very much reminds me of Cthulhu Death May Die which got a lot of flack when it was on Kickstarter and it sort of flew under the radar. And now that it's come out, everyone realized how sometimes you don't have to overcomplicate things or make things too complex or detailed or nuanced to still have them be a whole heck of a lot of fun. You got some variability, you've got some replayability, and you've got content that you can mix and match while making it as fun as possible and is easy to get to the table. That's what I see with this game. That's why I'm excited about this game. Not because it's going to be the most uh, nuanced, detailed, Gloomhaven-esque, 
uh, dungeon crawler that's going to give me the deepest campaign that I have ever imagined for. No, there's other stuff out there for that. That is not what I'm also going to be able to get to the table on a frequent basis. This is going to be something I can play with my kids. This is going to be something I can pull out a one offer with whatever game group I want to play with on a Saturday night and then go play something else. That is the type of game that I see this as being without being too overly complicated and too much overhead in terms of needing to explain that you're going to need a dedicated group like you really do for a lot of those other ones. In that sense, I think it lends itself to both being a pro and a con, just with the points I just outlined. If you're looking for a more deep, layered, overhead, campaign, story-driven, narrative-heavy dungeon crawler, this is not going to be that. But if you want something that's light, that has some depth with some tactical gameplay while still not making you burn your brain, this is going to be a game like that. And if you don't like that, if you don't like that aspect, this is an easy pass. This also, for better and for worse, is not dice dependent. You are not having to be at the mercy of the dice. And for some people, again, that's a blessing. And some people, you know, like really dice chucking. I personally am more than okay with both. I like the artwork. The artwork is going to be divisive, as I said at the beginning of the video. This is not a large rule book. There is not a lot of large overhead. But what it is, is you're revealing your quest. You're exploring. And it's taking the trope of the video game, sort of a la Final Fantasy, where you go into the next area and you have a random attack from enemies. And you're lining up your characters in certain zones on the tile, and the enemies are targeting randomly one zone. So there still is some randomness to this game. Do not be confused by the lack of dice that there is not randomness. There still is. But it's done in a different manner. Again, if you don't want randomness or a little randomness in your dungeon crawler, look elsewhere. Another positive. I don't see comboing and attacking with other people on your turn and being able to interact like that in many other games. And I think that is a very simplistic but straightforward way that they've done it here, not to make it too overcomplicated. Because you're spending a currency that you gain each time you play an ability. So it's not something that is going to be also impossible to do. This is where the small amount of dice rolling is in effect. On these tiles, they're going to be marked in certain sections. Like in this area, it's going to be one, two, three, it's going to be four, five, six, and then these two other two areas are going to be seven and eight. The monster is going to roll a die, and if you roll one through four, He's going to do this attack. If you roll five or six, he's going to do this attack. And then if you roll whatever on the other die, that's the area on the board, on the tile, that he's going to attack and anyone in that area is going to get hit. Again, if you don't want that randomization there, you're not going to like it because there is not sometimes something that you can necessarily do to solve that or to mitigate it. You can see just here as the example, you know, okay, this is what you're doing here. If you choose this ability, this is what you're doing with this ability, and this is what you're doing with this ability. They're upgradable. You can get artifacts to, uh, you know, get special powers or abilities, and it's relatively straightforward. I mean, this is not a complicated formula to do a lot of the actions and the figuring out of what happens when during this game. Contribution points, as I mentioned, I don't see that in any other game. So I like the fact that if you contribute, you get rewarded. It's not just whoever lands the killing blow is going to get the reward. So it makes people stay engaged fully throughout. So that's another positive. The concern I have is these missions. How samey are these missions going to be? Are you going to be doing, uh, you know, a la a lot of the online role-playing games uh, like World of Warcraft? Are, is it going to be a grind? Okay, go kill, kill two of these types of guys. Okay, the next mission, go kill these two type of guys. I don't know how different these missions or quests are going to be in that sense and how it's going to affect things because some of the gameplay mechanics are more relativistically simple. That would be a big question mark for me at this point. But again, that's about it. That's not a very big rule book. So what do I think? I'm in right now. As you can see, I am backing it at the deluxe level. And I, unless something happens between now and the end of campaign to make me rethink that, I am almost likely 100% going to keep that because this clicks and hits all of those boxes that I mentioned that are positives for me. This is an anime style Cthulhu death may die in my eyes, as right or wrong as that comparison may be. That is the vibe that it gets me. 
And I am a big fan of Cthulhu Death May Die. I think it's one of the best games Simon has ever put out. So the fact that I'm comparing it to that, and I'm not saying it's going to be as good as that, it gives me hope that this is not just an IP grab that they've done. There is some real thought and effort put behind this before it even got to this point. But again, like I said, is it going to be the deepest? No, it's not. It's going to be what it is going to be. And what I mean by that is, it's not trying to be something else that it's not. It knows what it is, it's maximizing that, and it's staying true to that. It's not trying to encompass every single type of thing that's out there trying to appeal to every single type of gamer. And I see that sometimes with these campaigns or with these games or with these dungeon crawlers in particular. Well, we got to have a solo. We got to have a co-op. We got to have this mode. We got to have that mode. Sometimes less is more. And that's the feeling I get from this campaign. And that's why I'm backing it at the deluxe level right now. There are maybe apparently going to be some expansions. So I'll see what ends up happening with that. And because I think value for the expansions could be a little, meh. but I'm still interested. So there you go. There's some thoughts. There's some breakdown of Epic 7 Arise. Let me know if that interests you at all. Uh, let me know if you're backing or not. Let me know what you like or not. As always, thank you for listening to my ramblings. If you like this, throw me a sub. If not, throw me a sub anyway. Just kidding. Okay. Thanks. Stay classy out there.